Thank you and bonjour à tous. Uh, we are in France, I have to say a few words in French. And uh, some people coming from my country asked me whether I would talk French or English. I will talk English. But obviously, if you have some questions afterwards in French, I would be delighted to answer them in French. So thank you, Mr. Lyons, uh, for this invitation here uh, in Deauville. And congratulations for having chosen uh, Deauville, and especially Normandy, which is also my home region. You're proud of Ireland, and I know why, but I'm from Normandy, I'm, uh, and I'm very proud of this region, which is, at, as it has been said in the morning, uh, one of the first regions for dairy sector, for cheese, uh, one of the first regions of France for cheese, for butter, for cream. So I think we can be proud of the region being in the dairy sector. As it has been said, I'm working for Lactalis Group uh, for more than 25 years now. And um, I'm in charge for the global communication and external affairs. And I have also few roles uh, in the dairy sector and especially in the European Dairy Association. And I'm the president of this association for the last two years. It's a real honor for me to talk and to, talk, to be here with you uh, due to the fact that this uh, session is held here in France and uh, to talk about uh, dairy and our assessments about the uh, future of our sector. Uh, for the next 20 minutes, I will shortly highlight the rich history of the activist group. For those who are from the press, uh, they all know that we are very uh, discreet and don't worry, I will not be very much talkative about Lactalis. Um, and the title that uh, uh, here I have to make some comments on, on it. Of course, I will give you also uh, insights, as it has been said, in our assessment of the future dynamism. And yes, Mr. Lyons, we have to talk about dynamism of the dairy sector. This is the number six D for us. For us in the dairy sector, I think uh, dynamism is more important and maybe it combines decide and dedicate, but for sure the sector is very dynamic. And yes, we are very proud that Lactalis translates in many areas what leadership is in dairy. But Lactalis does for sure not stand for business supremacy. I don't really know who has chosen this title, but I can guarantee all of you that the idea of business supremacy is something which is contrary to our corporate values, and I will come back to this in a minute. But nevertheless, the word supremacy must be used when we talk about milk as such. Please allow me to share with you what is for me personally the most important element when talking about dairy and the dairy industry. It's all about milk and the nutrition and health benefits of dairy around the world. In my role within Lactalis, I have the privilege to travel around the globe and to witness the importance of milk and dairy products in the lives of families, not only in France and Europe, but all over the world. Milk is a unique and natural blend of nutrients and micronutrients. All of you, we, you know this, but it has to be said. Milk is nutritious by nature and its health benefits are scientifically known. Voila, this is the message. This is the message that I really need to share wherever I go all over the globe. And now we'll come back and let's talk about one of the actors uh, which is uh, in the dairy sector, Lactalis. The history of Lactalis is 80 years now and uh, the company has been founded in 1933 by Mr. André Beignet and we are now having at the head of the company, which is still a family business, by the way, um, uh, the third generation uh, is at the head of the company. Lactalis today, I put a few figures on the, what happened just in order to come back to what are the opportunities. And as you can see, and we are not so many of these dairy processors which are nowadays in India. India, maybe I, I don't know whether there are some people from India here, but like, yes, I saw you in the, okay, thank you, there is one person there. And we are very proud also now today uh, to start our new experience in India. We all know that India is the first milk producer of the world. So how can a, a, a business um, and a dairy processor like Lactalis can't be outside a big country like that? Lots of people are talking about China, and it is true, 
and it is very, very, very important. But never forget that India is also uh, the big actor of our sector. Um, what is very important also, Mr. Lyons has talked about the five Ds. For us, uh, our adventure and our big growth and our big development that we have had in the last 20 years is based on people. And people sharing the same values is very important. And we have not the five Ds, but we have as value ambition, engagement, and simplicity. And we try to stick to them. And for sure, you can put some of the Ds in those three values. These, they are the key to a, the individual of collective success that we have had in the last 80, year, 80 years. Also, what is important is that we respect cultures and we are very linked to our roots because our headquarters is based in Laval, about 200 kilometers away from here. And it is quite rare that uh, companies to the size of a group like today we are, are still based in a medium-sized uh, town uh, outside Paris. Respect for cultures. Yes, we are very much linked to the territories and all our production sites are not obviously in Paris. We are most in rural, fragile, and even in the mountains. We respect all the countries um, and we share experience and dairy cultures. And this is very important when now today we are uh, active and having uh, industrial sites in more than 36 countries to share the industrial and the knowledge of dairy in each country. Some key figures, quickly, it has been said already. So um, we are now considered as the world leader for dairy products. What is important is that uh, also we are the world leader in cheese market and that also we are in a good place in the agri-food group worldwide. But this is not very important to us. What is important to us is that we are working with over 60,000 employees in 70 countries and this is the real development that we have had through the last 20 years, as I said before. What is also important of Lactalis? We are also having a, a unique growth model with covering all dairy profession. We are processing milk, but only milk. And you see that at the bottom, 34% of our turnover is cheese, then comes liquid milk, and you can see that on the screen for the rest. This is very important also for our model because uh, when we have some volatility and when we have some difficult areas also, we can also balance within the different production that we can have all over the world. The presence of our, in the continent is also so important that I put this slide because we have se seen already the development that will come, not only in France, even though we are still strong in France with 25% of our turnover in France, Lactalis is still a very strong in a company in France, and we are working with over 15,000 employees in France and about the same number of farmers. By the way, are there any farmers from the group here in the morning? Mm. Ah, yes, I can see two hands. Thank you for being there. Thank you for being there. So maybe we can, we can make some um, advertising next time for your colleague to come, because I think there are some good messages to hear here. Okay, so I, I just said about the, uh, the geographical point of view. What is important also is the brand. This is one, apart from the people that I mentioned already, the brand is a second asset of our group. For the last 25 years, I go on dinners with my friends and people don't know what I'm doing. And when I say I'm working for Lactalis, most of the time people don't know who is Lactalis. And we live very well with this, but when we say that we are working for President, or for Galbani, or for any other brand, it comes to something else. And this is something very strong, and very, uh, um, a message that I want to pass. Brands are also very important for the development of our sector. We have also uh, multi-country brands. We have international, international brands that are the, the, the top three brands of our group. But also, we still keep local brands, and maybe as you come from different countries here, you will recognize some brands that you have 
in your own country. I'm sorry I had, I had a lesson from Nestle this morning in seeing the Kit Kat in the tables. I should have brought some of these products on the table. I, I'll do my best next time. I think tomorrow anyway, you'll have some cheeses at the buffet uh, that come from our group. So at least I've done this. But uh, now I remember that uh, Nestle also is a very big company. <laughs> OK, so um, this is uh, something that I want to mention. Uh, now, after um, talked about uh, uh, our brands and uh, about our, our activity, I want to have um, uh, some elements and to talk a little bit about the future of the dairy dynamics at the different levels. Here in France and in Europe, um, I will not give you too much details of the political dimension at the national French level or European level. But after deep structural reforms that we have had in our sector in the last 10 years in Europe, we, we, we would all agree on the need for regulatory stability for the next years. A stable regulatory environment will give to our sector, to the dairy farmers and to their milk processors, a basis of economic predictability that we need. We really need it in a more market-oriented future. Dairy has always had and will always play a crucial role in Europe. The EU dairy industry is working on a daily basis with more than one million farmers in Europe and assuring more than 300,000 jobs in about 12,000 milk processing sites across Europe. So you see the importance of our sector and, the, and this is why I, I really wanted to put this 6D about dynamic in our sector. The markets have changed a lot from structurally supply-driven market, we, where we had to find ways to sell our products, and we have had that in many years. We are now more in a de demand-driven market. We have seen some weakness in the European market for the last few months already. And today, we experience that in demand-driven markets, sudden changes, as we just had, in the demand structure can lead to quite heavy and unexpected turbulences. Maybe we can come back on this later on. Nevertheless, the new era of demand-driven market is sustained on mid and longer term by the global trends that you all know. It has been presented before. Demographic development, middle class increase, urbanization, global average dairy consumption. We have seen these figures. You know all of this. But for us, European processors of dairy farmers, what is important to note is that in 2050, Europe will decrease. So this is something very important, as it is today our most important market. This slide also is coming back to what has been said previously about uh, China and urbanization. But this is where we will find our tomorrow middle class consumers. Millions of people uh, more or more who will be in a position to afford high value animal proteins and health or valuable dairy products. And this urbanization trend has been mentioned in China, but I'm, I'm, we can go in details whether it will be in the brick or in the mint, as it has been said today, it is the same trend. If we add also to the global population growth the expected increase of the milk consumption per capita that you can see on this slide, and we continue the trend of this to the overall increased milk production that we have witnessed globally over the last decades, we run a risk of falling short, and this is the, the provision and the, for 2050, we run a risk to, of a falling short of about 80 million tons of milk per year. This is big. And this is more than half of the annual EU milk production today. So I will not be here in Deauville in, in, in 35 years, but obviously there is something that is, has to be taken into account when we're talking about future and future of the dairy sector. When we talk about milk and when we talk about farmers, 
And when we have chat, as I had before at the coffee break or this morning, the main question coming in is the price. Yes, we are talking about the benefit, but the price is also. So I could not come here and not talk about the price. Over the last five years, the milk price have aligned around the global uh, and in both hemispheres, and they align in one direction that you can see on this graph. Now, with the turbulences caused by the Russian ban of agriculture imports, the picture gets a bit more diverse again. And if we go more into details, in 2014, you can see that the world monthly milk price is not going to the same trend. It's not only New Zealand price who is decreasing, but US and EU price. Obviously, if I had come in April or May in front of you, I would not have had the same talk. But for the last two months, the situation of the price of the milk in New Zealand, the ban of Russia, the increase of the production in Europe is giving us some, will certainly give us some trouble regarding the price. I cannot be so positive for the very short term. If we, if we come back on the uh, prediction and the, of the graphs, here you have the, uh, the forecast of the EU Commission. You can maybe see in, uh, in blue the price of the milk from Jan to May, who was, who was even higher than the actual prediction of the EU Commission. Unfortunately, I think that in the future it will decrease and it will come back to more or less the projection that is made in the middle of this graph. Overall, you have seen this picture before presented by the gentleman of the Crédit Agricole. What is important here for us, and for us also as company, is the big figures that you have at the bottom of the hemisphere of the globe. It's not only Europe that we have to look. This is the message. You have, he you have heard this message many times. I am also here as a company man to say that this is where we are looking at. We are strong also in our turnover in uh, difficult countries. Mr. Lyons says that it is a difficult path. It is a difficult uh, job to go in different countries. But we are in Venezuela. We are in South Africa and in, sounding in uh, uh, other countries around uh, South Africa. We are in the countries. We are in Ukraine. And we have, obviously, trouble with our nearly 2,000 employees that are working in Ukraine. So it is a difficult situation. But again and again, we are working in a sector where the future is there. As you can see also um, in the previous slide, sorry, um, the milk will come also, as I said, uh, outside Europe. I just wanted to mention also to you that today five of the global dairy, top 10 dairies companies are based in Europe. So I think as a European man, we are quite prepared to, have, to, to, to tackle these challenges. But of course, it has not been said already, but the other competitors are there. And when you see the development with two-digit growth every year of Chinese companies, you can see that the competition is hard and we will have to fight with new actors in the future, with people that want to develop. You have heard, uh, I don't know if there are people from Israel, from, uh, but uh, that uh, Chinese company wants to acquire also an Israeli uh, company. So all these things, this is the globalization, and this is something that has to be pointed out. If now we come back in Europe, uh, and it has been presented in a different way, but it is more or less the same, um, you can see that uh, the north western milk belt, starting from West Spain up to north, um, put us in um, good conditions uh, for milk production. But here again, we have to be careful because the market is moving fast. The word volatility has been pronounced a few times this morning. I want to say today, yes, the trend is positive, but we will have ups and downs. And in any condition, 
if we want to tackle all this development that we have seen, that means that in 10 years' time, for EU, the target is, uh, and the objective is, uh, for the whole dairy sector, is to be number one in export. And export is always the first step for developing international partnership or international development as it has been presented to you before in China. Nestle themselves didn't start to have production in China like this. They started also step by step. And we are doing this also ourselves. This is our model. Nestle is far, uh, far uh, ahead in front of us, but we are having the same type of model. You cannot start in each country uh, with the same uh, investment. But again, uh, as Lactalis, we want to play a leadership role in achieving this goal for EU, but also at the global uh, level. But that, therefore, we need also in the future a supportive societal and political environment. This is important. We will have also to increase our efforts in processing milk in the most efficient way. You come back to what has been said about efficiency this morning. It is true for us as dairy processors, but it is true also for you as farmers. We will have also to increase our global management expertise and leadership in safety and quality. We always have to say that. It's, uh, it's a, a goal that we never forget. In, and when we talk about farmers, uh, we will need, of course, well-trained and entrepreneurial dairy farmers. This is why the speech that Mr. Lyons gave this morning is really online with what we believe in the group. And I don't forget also all the environment and the cows that are kept in best condition, which is something also that we have to face. For this also, as like Talis, I cannot also uh, finish this talk without talking about the brands also that uh, will allow us, us to gain sustain access, sorry, sustain access in markets in which we can sell our product to a price level that is beneficial for the whole sector. This is also something very important. The price that we sell the product is so important to you, farmers, and to the price of milk that we have to say it. And of course, again, when talking about our benefits, I need to end with this, reminding you all the benefits of milk and dairy products. Thank you for your attention. Enjoy Deauville and enjoy dairy. <laughs>